Hello Internet, Ibrahim here. Let's face it, the programming tutorial you read on the web was not that useful. You didn't learn anything. A lot of people get excited when they get into the field, but the excitement ends when they start reading code. They realize that it has nothing to do with the awesome video games they play every day. Video games are usually the reason we get into this field, but it's very hard to make the connection between the for loop you learned in class and this epic scene. When you take a class, they show you the command line interface and a few lines of code you have to write to print hello world on the screen. But you have been using computers for the better part of your life and not even once have you used an application on the command line. If you tried to learn programming language before, then you must have heard of variables, those little containers you use to store values and stuff. At least that's what the teacher said. But you're still having a hard time seeing the connection between the variable and the graphics on the screen. In class, you were probably wondering, how do I create a character that jumps, runs, talks, and wear cool sunglasses? But the teacher is only showing you how to print text on the screen. Well, the reason is, even if you were shown how to do it, you wouldn't understand it. At least not yet. You see, most popular video games you play are backed by millions of dollars. Some have budgets higher than those of Hollywood movies. Let's take the last Metal Gear for example. They first started developing around 2011 only to release the game 4 years later in September 2015 and the estimated cost was over 80 million dollars. Even with that much money, they still weren't done and they had to compromise just to release it. But this doesn't mean that all video games require this much resources. There are games that make just as much impact with very limited budgets. But they make up for the money and the small size by having very experienced and talented creative developers. Like the team that created Journey, they went completely broke before they published. You might say, well, I don't want to make big games, just something small and cool. You are right. We can put the money aside, but one thing you can't do without is experience. Game programming, like all programming, is not easy, and it does not always involve working with cool stuff. Not all the code you see is going to appear on the screen. A lot of things involve writing some time-consuming logic that no one will ever see, but it'll be the most crucial part of your program. Okay, I'm not trying to depress you, I just want you to understand that programming is hard, and the feeling is the same among other developers. I spent years working as a programmer and there was a time it was depressing. I spent my days working, the evenings learning new stuff, and slept very little, but despite that, it felt like I was missing out. I could see my peers working on cool stuff that I had no clue how to get even started with it. But came a day I read something that changed my perspective forever. Jeff Atwood, a programmer that I highly respect and co-founder of Stack Overflow, wrote something kind of weird. We make shitty software with bugs. I knew that I write shitty software, but he was saying that we all write shitty software with bugs, and that's normal. This was the mantra the best programmers were living by, and here I was struggling with the fact that everything I create looked bad. Whether it was Microsoft, Google, or some other large company, they all make shitty software. And that's totally fine, because every day, they will do their best to improve their software a little more. Let's plug it in. It's going to say, hey, I see you plugged in a new device. And it's going to load in the appropriate drivers. You'll notice that this scanner build... Whoa. <laughs> Moving that right must, along. That must, be, uh, that must be why we're not shipping Windows 98 Absolutely. Yet. Programming is hard. Despite the best of your effort, you will still have a hard time learning it. But this won't stop you from getting started because you are here today, watching this video, and you have made the commitment. I want to help you understand programming, not only on an academic level, but in a practical matter. When you are done watching this series, you should be able to turn around and make a living using your newfound skill. On the next video, I will teach you how to get started. I have a little hint for you. The first step does not involve coding. Can you guess what it is? Feel free to write it on the comment section. Alright, that's it for today. Don't forget to share this video with others if you think they can benefit from it. You can subscribe to be the first to know when I post the next lesson. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.